Good evening and welcome to another edition of the HC6 Experience. I'm Ed Brigger, President of Hutchinson Community College, and this program gives us a chance to talk to the community and introduce the community to some of the personalities we have on campus and also talk about some of the activities that we have uh, happening on a regular basis at Hutchinson Community College. This evening's guest is Randy Myers, and Randy is our Vice President of Student Services. And Randy uh, has a, a lot of responsibilities, but certainly one that is out on the horizon is commencement and the planning of commencement, making commencement happen. And you might talk to our readers, or our readers, our listeners a little bit about uh, some of the things that will be happening with commencement and the involvement we'll have and uh, speaker and that type of thing, Randy. Sure. Uh, commencement, of course, is kind of the culmination of the celebration of student um, accomplishments for the entire year. We have actually three uh, groups of students who are invited to each commencement. We have students who have graduated in August, from the college. We have a number of students that graduate in December and then uh, students who graduate in May at the traditional time. And so all three of those groups of students will be attending our commencement which is uh, next Friday night, uh, May 10th at 7 p.m. in the sports arena and that's the traditional location for commencement. Um, students are basically uh, being awarded on that evening degrees and the college offers three degrees. They offer the Associate in Arts degree and Associate in Science degree. Students receiving that degree are primarily transferring onto a four-year school. And then we have the Associate in Applied Science degree in various areas and certificates of completion in various areas. And those students are moving directly from their graduation into uh, uh, the, the degree area that they've, that they've worked to complete. Um, the celebration itself, we acknowledge uh, an outstanding faculty member as uh, selected by our Student Government Association and their process. We uh, acknowledge our Young Kansan Awards, and that's two students, a male and a female graduate, who are nominated by faculty and then uh, uh, are voted on by uh, employees of the college, and then that, that person is acknowledged that night. We have a guest speaker, and uh, this year's guest speaker is Robba Moran, who is one of the Kansas Board of Regents. She'll be joining us to give a commencement address. Um, we will acknowledge retirees and uh, our alumnus of the year on that evening. And then, of course, the culmination is when graduates walk across the stage and receive their degree or certificate. This year, we'll have uh, about 500 students, give or take a few, who will be uh, receiving their degree that evening. You mentioned the Associate of Arts and Associate of Science degree. What's the primary difference between those two degrees? I know it seems as though we have a large number of Associate of Arts graduates every year and maybe not so many in the science side. What's, what's the primary difference between those two degrees? Um, the, uh, the primary difference is the, both, both degrees are, are considered transfer oriented degrees, so they're for students that are going on to a four-year school. The primary difference is the Associate of Science requires uh, a little bit more in the natural science area, uh, in the um, social, and human social science and humanities area, than the Associate in Arts degree. Both prepare students with general education courses but the Associate of Science just requires a little more uh, preparation. <coughs> With those students going on to K or K State and engineering, these students would have be more likely to have an Associate of Science degree. Would that uh, be more the profile? But typically, a student who's who's maybe a, a pre-pharmacy or an engineering student or uh, a student who wants to uh, make sure that the 45 credit hour block that the Regents requires complete, they may go towards the Associate in Science. The Associate in Arts student will plan on attending not only a regent school, but maybe attending a private college in the area or seeking other opportunities in higher education. So, <clears throat> yeah, the question always arises when you look at, at those two, <clears throat> two groups of students, what do you say our percentage would be of transferring on of the Associate of Arts and Associate of Science degree? I know that just because you get the Associate of Arts degree doesn't mean you're going to immediately transfer on to four-year school. Right, right. Um, I think, uh, well, in terms of our graduates, just in terms of preparation, we've seen a, uh, uh, a steady trend in the number of technical 
graduates that we have. Um, the Associate in Arts preparation, probably uh, uh, the large majority of our students that are transferring on are going to get that degree. Uh, now, how many of those students immediately transfer on? Uh, that's a little more difficult to measure. Uh, but, but the lion's share of our students are planning on a direct transfer. When you look at, <clears throat> at our student population, that Associate of Applied side, Science degree you mentioned as being not a transfer degree, but there are institutions, increasing number of institutions that are accepting Absolutely. that Associate of Applied Science as a transfer. Sure. Even though it's not designed as a transfer degree, a number of institutions across the state and nation are recognizing that students with career preparation um, have an interest in receiving a baccalaureate degree. And so quite often what those institutions are doing is tailoring the degree so that uh, the student's major work that they've completed in nursing or in computer support or in manufacturing is uh, recognized as meeting some of their major requirements uh, or most of their major requirements and then the student completes some general education courses at that school they transfer to and then they supplement their <coughs> preparation either in management or in, uh, the, in the degree area itself and then receive a bachelor's degree. That's becoming an increasingly popular uh, degree option. You know, the fourth category you mentioned would be the certificate. And we just recognize those people that have the one-year certificate, correct? That is correct. Uh, the, the standard certificate is a, a 32 or more hour certificate, 32 credit hours uh, for the viewers. Uh, and that represents about a year of academic work if the student's going full time. And those are very specialized areas where uh, the student is taking uh, a predominance of courses in their area of preparation. For example, uh, surgical technicians will take a year of preparation, sit for their exam, and that is very specific coursework to prepare them for that particular career. <coughs> that they'll be recognized uh, for their uh, certificate completion. I know you mentioned LPN being a large group of those same kinds of students. That's a one-year program as well. Yes, and that uh, the actually the LPN program will represent. I think based on our our look this morning, they'll represent the largest single group of certificate recipients that we'll be having uh, walk the stage at our commencement celebration this year. When we look at at our graduates and you look at those certificates, you know we talk about stackable certificates. And how, how does the LPN and some of our other areas lend themselves to being stackable, meaning taking a one-year certificate and being able to stack that into an Associate of Arts degree or an Associate of Applied Science degree, and then being able to stack that perhaps into even a baccalaureate degree? I think that's a, that's a, a new and emerging concept, and I think it's a very interesting concept. The idea is that the student will come to us and may desire a, a credential that will mean initial employment. In the example that you use, the allied health area, that student may receive a certified nurse aid credential. And that CNA credential will allow the student to go out and get employment in a, a, a care facility and uh, start receiving an income as they go forward. As they work, they may desire to expand their horizons in allied health and so that CNA may uh, decide to get that LPN certificate, the, the practical nursing certificate. And uh, then that practical nurse, after they've had that experience, may decide they'd like to get their RN. And so those, the, the, the concept that we're seeing more and more in technical education is the concept, concept of stackable credentials where you start with one area of training, you build on that and get another certificate, you build on that and, and get another certificate or degree, um, and over your lifetime then you're, you're, uh, you're engaged in lifelong learning, but it's also learning that is credentialized so that uh, an employee can can build on their previous skills. You know, <clears throat> you mentioned the CNA. Now that is not a certificate that we recognize because that's kind of short-term training. Right. At least seen as short-term training. Right. But it would be one of those stackable credentials. So we have a we have an entry-level 
um, certificate that we give in manufacturing, the manufacturing skills certificate, to get people prepared for basic levels of manufacturing employment. And then that student may turn that into a manufacturing engineering technology degree, which is recognized at commencement. You know, how many students will actually be there, Randy? Oh, uh, we, we uh, of course, students aren't required to walk. That is a celebration, and we hope students will, will come. But we ask students, of that 900-plus of that graduates, I think we've got 911 individuals that have qualified for a degree or certificate, we'll have over 500 in, in uh That's really a good attendance. percentage. It is. It's a very good percentage. And, and uh, I think uh, for the public that attends, you'll see that... Um, that uh, feeling of uh, accomplishment from the perspective of the families, and uh, that's important to us. <clears throat> yeah, I think that does make us a little bit unique in the number of graduates we have attending, the families that we have attending. The arena will be full. The arena will be full. And at, <clears throat> at one time, back in the 80s, we had really set up both places, Gallon Stadium as well as the arena. And that was kind of a nightmare for our maintenance people because they had to have two setups in case we had inclement weather, we would move it inside. But right now, we couldn't even get all of our uh, attendees and, uh, and graduates uh, uh, into Gallon Stadium, even with the addition we have. That's correct. We, we, uh, our capacity about 5,000 gallons and 7,000 in the arena, we'll be pretty much there. We'll be pretty much full. Um, and, and we're very proud of that, and we feel like that's a, a strong indicator of. Uh, of the desire of our students to, to kind of culminate their hard work with a celebration. Um, and so we're very much looking forward to that celebration. <clears throat> you know, what I, what I really like, uh, what, what you've done with our commencement, is certainly have all of our graduates to get their certificates, Associate of Applied Science, Associate of Arts, Associate of Science. Some institutions have broken out the technical, and they have a, a separate uh, commencement ceremony for technical, and to my way of thinking, or one institution, uh, as long as we have facilities to accommodate everybody, I think it's very important to have all those, those graduates in the same room. I think that's our, our desire and goal, is to try to, to uh, acknowledge the hard work of all of our students in one single location and one single celebration. That has some real benefits, I think, for the institution. Um, and the other thing that maybe is a little different from our institution and, and the commencement program is that we acknowledge each, in, each individual student. Each <coughs> student walks across the stage and receives their acknowledgement in the form of their diploma cover. Their diploma is actually mailed to them later, but uh, we feel like that's important to say each student's name and have them uh, recognized by the administration and the board of the college. And so board members will shake their hands, and, and we just feel like that's an important attribute of our commencement. And we've done a lot to really make it a professional type of environment, even to the point of those individuals reading the names are people from Radio Kansas who have that trained voice, and that helps, uh, helps as far as the general feel of the event as well. You know, we want our students to feel a little bit of pomp and circumstance. We want them to um, feel like they're, that it's a, a special <coughs> environment for them. And so we begin this ceremony with uh, our faculty forming uh, lines on each side of the uh, processional so that students can walk through that line and be acknowledged um, by their faculty members that they've worked with during the years. Um, that's important. Uh, we we uh, have the students march in uh, their area of degree and uh, then march across the stage after the, uh, uh, after the ceremony uh, and, and uh, that's kind of the culmination of the events. When we, <clears throat> when we look at, at this 500 plus walking across the stage, pride, provide recognition for faculty, provide recognition for honor students, provide recognition for Phi Theta Kappa, uh, uh, provide uh, recognition for young Kansan of the year. When we, when we do those kinds of ceremonies, even with that, if a person chooses to come to our commencement, what kind of time commitment are they going to be looking at, Randy? We uh, typically will be, from start of ceremony to end of ceremony, we'll be just right at 90 minutes, an hour and a half to an hour and three quarters. <clears throat> uh, and so it's not an overly long ceremony. 
uh, we feel like we, we are pretty timely with it and uh, stay right on task. Um, you know, one of the things we've done is, is also stream it. Uh, so if, if a person, you know, we have a, a, not a large number, but a number of students who never come to Hutchinson Community College. With the online system as it is, they're taking classes maybe in Florida, maybe in California, wherever, but they might not ever come to campus except for commencement. So for their friends and relatives to see commencement, they can do it online. They can, they can see it online. Uh, we also have plans this year to YouTube video the commencement celebration, and so uh, the, uh, the, the plan is that uh, we'll have YouTube videos out there so that after the fact people can watch the commencement ceremony, and that gives our graduates an opportunity as well to go back and watch the ceremony and see themselves walk across stage and that kind of thing. <coughs> Uh, so that's, that's something a little new this year. You know, at one time we did have, we did video the ceremony and, and made those videos available at a cost to, to our graduates. We don't do that any longer but because they can get it on YouTube. Right. No, no charge at all. Just queue it up, look at it, and go from there. Yes, yes, that's correct. Uh, so, and and, and uh, the, uh, the folks in our uh, public relations department have done a good job in kind of putting that together. And, of course, the co uh, students and sponsor of our broadcasting program are, are assisting us with that as well. Uh, Randy Myers, our Vice President of Student Services, joining us with the uh, HEC experience. Uh, we'll take a short break now and talk about other programs at Hutchinson Community College. Welcome back to the HCC Experience. I'm Ed Berger, President of Hutchinson Community College, and as our guest tonight, we have Randy Myers, and Randy is our Vice President of Student Services, and as such, while we've been talking about commencement, uh, certainly a, a, a great ceremony for a college when you recognize the accomplishments of our students, whether it be in technical, with academic, or uh, looking at a credential, uh, certainly that is a, a wonderful culmination of the events of two years or one year study for students. and. Uh, great recognition from their family, friends, and community. Good to have that kind of celebration. Absolutely, and, and you know, leading up to commencement, we have multiple celebrations that occur that uh, uh, you get an opportunity to see uh, the family a little uh, closer and, and uh, the, the ceremonies that uh, lead up to commencement just uh, really kind of bring into focus how um, how hard students have worked and how grateful they are to uh, be have this uh, part of their life complete and ready to move on into their next uh, endeavor. <clears throat> you know, one of the things that we have so many allied health programs at Hutchinson Community College, and certainly allied health programs are, are a little bit unique in that they have pinning ceremonies, and I suppose we started way back with the pinning ceremony for the associate degree nurse, and now it's broadened to other programs as well. You might talk a little bit about those pinnings, when they are, and, and maybe the significance of those pinning events for individuals involved in those training uh, training areas. You know, we have, uh, the, the pinning ceremony is kind of a, a unique event. It's where the uh, faculty of a particular area acknowledge the hard work of the students that have been in that area by giving them a pin that represents something about their profession. And uh, those pins are valued by the the recipients because they uh, they have symbolic meaning that uh, 
the student has uh, met the standards that the faculty have established and that they're moving from being a student to being a colleague of that faculty member in the profession. And uh, so the week before commencement, we have a flood of pinning ceremonies. Those include, uh, we have a practical nursing program in cooperation with uh, uh, Salina Aerial T uh, Area Technical College, and so we'll have a pinning in Salina for that group of students. We'll have a pinning of the practical nursing students through the Hutchinson Community College uh, uh, practical nursing program. We'll have a pinning ceremony uh, the day of commencement for our registered nurses that are completing their associate degree nursing program and getting ready to sit for that RN uh, test. We'll have a pinning ceremony for our health information technology students. Um, I don't think I'm leaving any of the pinning ceremonies out, but at those ceremonies you'll have uh, the number of graduates, 20 to, to 55 graduates that will uh, come in and receive that pin There'll be a ceremony where they acknowledge each other in, in, in various ways, and their faculty will acknowledge them, and their families will be there. Uh, those typically are going to be in smaller venues like our, uh, like our recital hall, where there are going to be four to 500 guests in attendance, <coughs> and then there's typically some kind of, uh, of uh, uh, social event afterwards where uh, there's punch and cookies and an opportunity for family members to talk to faculty members and so on. And you know, what's, what's great about those ceremonies is you kind of get a feeling of the life story of those students and the uh, various sacrifices that they've made to, to achieve that pin. And that, that really kind of brings into focus the commencement week. You know, when you look at, at those pinning ceremonies, we mentioned the social degree nursing and we also mentioned the, the LPN pinning. Those LPN pins are so significant to those students. They're non-traditional students, and those non-traditional students usually have overcome huge obstacles to make that uh, walk across the stage and getting that pen and, and uh, moving into a career that can provide them a new life, a whole, uh, whole, a whole and total new life. Yeah, that's... that's, and that's I think that, that meaningfulness of that ceremony is tremendously important. It is, and that's, that's where you really get a focus on how dedicated that student has been. Uh, many times uh, a student uh, receiving a pin will be a single parent or have some other obstacle in their life and yet they have been a full-time student. They've still raised a family. They've still accomplished uh, outside work. Um, they've, they've done all of the things that they have to do except probably sleep mm -hmm. um, during their program to, uh, to get that credential. It is extremely <clears throat> important to that student. You know, I, <clears throat> when you have the LPN and ADN pinning, the audience in those ceremonies is really unique. If you want to go to a solemn, quiet ceremony, don't go there because you'll have crying kids and other, because that's the family. That's the family of those people who are getting that credential, being there to celebrate with that student. And that is, I, I think as much as anything, you like the energy from the, the family being there and the family that has felt like they've made a sacrifice too absolutely to, to make that uh, that walk across the stage they're they're every bit walking across the stage with that candidate absolutely um, and then you know we'll have this week uh, of commencement we'll have other celebrations as well this is kind of a, a week where everybody kind of crams their celebrations into one week to acknowledge students we'll have uh, athletic banquets we will have um, uh, forensics and other organizational banquets. We will acknowledge our Young Kansan Awards, which are our outstanding male and female graduates. Uh, there, there's just, uh, it's, a, it's a packed week. We'll have a, 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 a ceremony acknowledging our retirees and those uh, faculty members that are receiving tenure. Uh, we'll have uh, a, a ceremony for our alumnus of the year, a, a, a celebration of that. So it's really a packed week of events that kind of serve as a it kind of serves as a culmination of the year. You, you mentioned the Young Kansan of the Year Award. Uh, that is a special celebration that we have been. I, I don't know what thirty five years I don't at know. least, and yeah. that's sponsored by Central Bank and Trust. Yes, and you might talk to our viewers a little bit about how that selection is made and the recognition these students. Uh, 
received for being young Kansans of the year? In the spring semester of, of the year, uh, a, a call for nominations goes out to all faculty members. And the uh, desire is to identify candidates who represent uh, the very best and brightest at HCC. And so faculty members will review their dealings with their individual students and they'll nominate those students. And then those nominees are put out to all faculty and administration and there's a, a voting that takes place um, based on the students' uh, uh, academic performance, community performance, um, uh, internal performance in, on the, in terms of campus life, you know, all the activities and organizations they've been involved in and what they've done and that kind of thing. And, and so uh, that is a, uh, uh, an event that then is recognized uh, during commencement week by bringing uh, the student and their families to campus and uh, acknowledging them uh, for winning that award. It's really kind of a fun thing because when you make the award or, or recognition or announce it, uh, the, the students actually don't know who, who, what they're doing there. They don't know why they've been called in. And you make the presentation and have family there. And it's really kind of exciting. Yeah, we, we try to make it a surprise. Sure. Uh, and I think that adds to the ceremony. And so uh, it's, it's a very fun event. And of course, we invite their advisors and their faculty members and those people that have been around the students during their, uh, their time at HCC to be part of that celebration. Of course, last week we had Who's Who recognition. And Who's Who, of course, is a, a student nominated by uh, faculty at Hutchinson Community College. I think we must have had 25 or 26 students who recognized with who's who and uh, that's a wonderful celebration as well. That student has to have at least a 3.0 grade point average being involved in uh, community service activity either on campus or off campus and it's great to see a wonderful cross-section of students getting that kind of recognition. Absolutely and then we have also Prior to commencement week, but a commencement activity, we just acknowledged uh, our athletic academic uh, honorees, and those are students who are student athletes who have performed uh, with excellence in the classroom and, and achieved an academic level of performance, and so they're honored for their academic uh, performance um, in addition to their athletic performance. And that was, that was a ceremony that was started by an English faculty member uh, gosh, uh, 20 years ago, and he basically said, you know, we've got a lot of great athletes on campus who are also uh, great students, and uh, they not only are practicing and participating and competing on the athletic fields and courts, but they're also competing very well in the classroom, and he felt it was important that they be recognized, and that tradition certainly has continued, and certainly it's one of those unique celebration we, celebrations that we have here at Hutchinson Community College. Yes, it is. Uh, and, and and a well-deserved celebration. You know, students are, are uh, working hard in the classroom and, and uh, should be acknowledged. So just kind of going over the celebrations, if we look at uh, uh, next week, beginning uh, uh, really on Wednesday, if you're in the Saline area, we have our LPN pinning. Uh, so that's going to be at the High Patrol office up there, uh, their training complex at 7 p.m. Uh, we have the uh, LPN pinning here on campus at 7 p.m. in Stringer Fine Arts Recital Hall. We have the uh, ADN pinning at uh, uh, 1 p.m. on Friday. We have the Health Information Technology pinning at 3.30 on Friday. And then we have commencement at 7 p.m. on, on Saturday, on Friday, Friday on the Friday 10th. Evening, yes. And again, if you want to come, if you want to attend commencement, I can't emphasize enough to you how important it is to be there early because uh, the, the arena fills up and uh, uh, the likelihood of it being cool after that many people is probably slim and none. So make, make sure you get a, a seat in the, uh, in the red seats or the blue seats. So you'd have to get there probably about 6.30 to make sure you have a, have a good seat. So again, we invite our community to be part of these celebrations. Uh, what we're doing is celebrating excellence and completion and, and again, we talk about True Blue Excellence all the time at Hutchinson Community College, and this week is certainly a celebration of all that excellence. Thank you again for joining us for the HEC Experience. I'm Ed Berger, President of Hutchinson Community College.